Blog Talk Radio. Welcome back to Real Combat Media Boxing Radio. This is episode 32. I'm your host, Christy Rosario, here in Los Angeles. My co-host is Richard Solomon, the boxing prophet in New York City. How you doing, prophet? I'm all pumped up and uh, still reeling from Saturday night's epic slugfest. All right, we will definitely get into that. But first, I want to introduce our panel host. We have the ever-popular host of the Left Hook Lounge, Vivek Wallace in Florida. How are you doing, Vivek? Hey, guys. How's it going? Thank you for having me back. Good to have you back. And we also have our other host here tonight, our panel host, is the Denver Boxing Examiner and writer for InsideBoxing.com, Stephen Johnson. Hey, Stephen. Hey, guys. How are you? How's everybody doing today? Good. Good. Good to have you on the show again. It's going to be fun. Good to have you back. Good to hear from you and the prophet. Always good to talk to you guys. That's right. And now you'll meet Vivek, and we're going to be one big happy family together today. It's going to be fun. All this knowledge in one place. Crazy. <laughs> All right. We- <laughs> All right, guys, so live callers, 347-324-5998 at Real Combat Media, if you want to Twitter us, or at Boxing Girl, B-X-I-N-G-I-R-L is my Twitter, or at Boxing Profit 68 for the Boxing Profit. Facebook, Real Combat Media in the search bar. Our topics today, we have really good topics, really good guests. I'm excited, but our topics of the episode are Alvarado versus Provodnikov recap. Rosado versus Quillen preview. And we will preview Hopkins versus Murat. Now, later in the show, we will be talking to undefeated middleweight world champion who will be fighting November 2nd against Curtis Stevens on HBO, not Showtime, HBO, at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. The hard-hitting knockout artist himself, Gennady Golovkin, Triple G. It will be coming on just a little later. But first, up first, the boxing prophet and I, we pre-taped an interview with Mike Alvarado's head trainer, Rudy Hernandez, yesterday. Now, because Rudy was supposed to go to uh, Australia to fly over there last night for Shane Mosley's fight for October 23rd. But as you know, Shane came back to the United States Left that fight. We know there's something brewing. We don't know exactly what it is, but we will find that out later. So I'm going to uh, put on the interview with uh, Rudy Hernandez, and then we're going to come back. But first, you know, you're going to hear Rudy talk a bit about his brother as well. And I just want I was remiss to mention uh, Gennaro Chicanito Hernandez, his record. The only two losses Gennaro had were to Oscar De La Hoya and Floyd Mayweather, and then Rudy will talk about that. But I want to tell you, Gennaro was the people's champion. I knew him personally, and if you knew him, he was a fantastic person, a perfect role model for kids. You know, these days you see fighters that do all sorts of things. Gennaro was great, and unfortunately, very sad, two years ago he passed away from cancer, and many of you might probably know this if you know anything about Gennaro and he's truly missed. He was the WBA World Super Featherweight Champion. He was the WBA Lightweight Champion and the WBC Super Featherweight Champion. His record was 38 wins, 17 knockouts. Again, like I said, only lost twice to two phenomenal fighters, as we know who they are, and only one draw. So we're now going to go into the uh, interview with Rudy Hernandez. 
Welcome, Rudy Hernandez, to Real Combat Media Boxing Radio. You're on the show with myself, who you know, Christy Rosario, and Richard, the boxing prophet Solomon. So, welcome, Rudy. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm, how about you guys? How are you guys doing? I'm good. How are you, prophet? I'm doing great. <laughs> He's all the way in New York City, and we're here in Los Angeles. Um, so, you're back in town. But as I heard that you're ready to fly out tonight, is that still happening? Yes, as far as I as far as I know, uh, they're they're still negotiating. I I believe, and uh, I'll know in the, in the next few hours if if the fight uh, got completely canceled or not. Okay, so we're talking about the Shane Mosley fight over there in Australia. So you get back from Denver yesterday, and then you're flying. 16 hours to Australia. You can get over your jet lag yet? What is that? I don't know what that is. <laughs> That's true. I know. We've got to tell everybody. Let's say Rudy, if he's not being a head trainer, he's an assistant cornerman, he's on UFC, um, what do they call you over cut there? Man. Like the cut man. That's right. You're the cut man. So, and then while you're over there, will you be doing some UFC or do you come back for that later? No, I come back. I come back, and uh, my my next show with the UFC will be uh, on November the sixth. We're in uh, we're in Kentucky. November the sixth in Kentucky. Okay, and then I think in the beginning of December they have a you go to Australia, don't you, for the fights, the UFC? Yes, that's in December. But uh, but let's let's not forget we have a great card coming up uh, November sixteenth in in Las Vegas, George St. Pierre. It's, oh, it's amazing. George St. Pierre. Yep, GSP. That's right. That's going to be a big one. That's going to be a big one. Well, good. And then here you are with the boxing. I know you've never given up the boxing. You fought yourself. Um, actually, Prasad and I were talking before you got on the line about your career and how you beat Lupe Aquino, right, Prophet? Yes, uh, yes. I, but I would have to say that that would be your biggest win. Lupe Aquino, I believe, was undefeated at the time, and you handed him his first loss as a pro. That must have been a very satisfying uh, feeling for you. Yeah, well, you know, as I, as, as I, was, I told uh, Lupe Aquino that w- one time, I said, uh, you know, he and I had better fight, uh, better workouts in the gym than we did the, the, diet, the night we fought. Um, you know, the we cheated. I, I I believe that we cheated the public out of a of, of a really good fight because uh, you know I lost 30 pounds in 30 days for that fight and and Lupe I think he might have had uh, problems with his right hand. So uh, at the end of the day, you know, like I said, I, I think we cheated the public out of a, a really good fight and ourselves. You know. How do you lose 30 pounds in 30 days and still be able to fight? You know, 10 rounds. That was when, when you must have been drained. Well, when you're when you're 20 years old, it's it's a it's, it's a lot easier. But as as you get older, it's just you know it's just um it's it's one of the toughest things to do. That is tough. And you know, you and I were talking, and you actually I saw you when you were overseas in Russia, and you were with Povetkin against Klitschko. And I you know I had asked you because I it bothered me how Klitschko was throwing Povetkin around. And you had said, well, you know, I told them what to do, and they didn't listen. So what happened in that situation? Well, you know, everybody's entitled to an opinion, right? And um, but at the end of the day, if, uh, there are certain things that, that you have to prepare for. You, you, you watch a fight, and then you, you, know, you prepare for it. If you, if you prepare for it and you lose, well, there's no excuse. We're okay. But, uh, but when you lose... When you didn't, when you knew things were going to be a little different, and, and you chose not to, then that's where I have a huge problem. It bothers me. Well, you because really and, 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 and like I and like I told you, you you're talking about Christmas. Well, what about Povetkin? What did he do? What did he do to make his situation better? Frisco did what he had to, and he won. And so, how can you blame him? So you don't think the referee should have taken more points or disqualified Klitschko for for all the fouls that he was doing with Povetkin? If if you if you gotta go out if you gotta if you feel like you gotta go out and uh, and feel like you need the referee's help, then 
I think it's wrong. I I I, I don't think that that's a that's the right attitude to have either. Right. Well, I know that they wanted you as a head trainer. You couldn't because you were already committed to Mike Alvarado. So what did you tell them, though? What could they could they have done to fight a fight that would have changed it around for himself? Well, you know he's going to lean on you. You know he's going to hold you. So what do you do about it? You make, you make the adjustment. Now, did he make adjustment? No. Did he? Did he? Was there even, even any kind of intentions on his part, on his part to make the adjustment? And I didn't see any. So, as far as I'm concerned, he he didn't get ready for this. He wasn't ready. You can't just show up and say, "Okay, I got this." Right. Of course not. Especially with someone like Klitschko. You know, you can't take him lightly. That's for sure. All right, so that's how that ended with that. So do you see Povetkin having a rematch, or what do you, what's going on with them? Did they mention that? Uh, I, I don't know. That's that's uh, that's part of their uh, of their uh, the, the the managers and uh, and his people's uh, you know that that's their deal. That I have nothing to do with it. Okay. So then you went back to the camp, and you were there for a month with Mike Alvarado. How was the camp over there in Denver? It was good. It was good. You know, we we got ready for this fight, and, um, you know, I, I got there with, with, uh, with a little bit over, you know, like three. I was able to be there for just a little bit under a month with them. Like three and a half weeks. I had a three and a half weeks uh, camp with them. And, uh, you know, we... We had we had a plan. We worked on it. He was able to be successful the first the first part of the fight, and after that, you know, you know, we were just we just got beat by a better fight. It sounds like you're in a restaurant, Rudy. Are you in a restaurant? I'm always in a restaurant. You're always in a restaurant, and you know, I hear people talking. Now you're going to order some food. You're making me hungry. It's lunchtime. So, okay, you were at the fight. You know, the first half of the fight was amazing. I mean, the two guys, you know, are both warriors no matter what. There's a lot of confusion. After the 10th round, you're in the corner. And what my interpretation was that you were saying that, you know, Mike is done. He seemed very incoherent to me. And then Tony Weeks, the referee, goes over and says, well, I have to hear it from Mike. What really happened? Because you're, you're, we're reading the press. Some people are like, wow, he's a warrior. Other people are like, he quit. What really happened, Rudy? I'm the one that quit. I'm the one that called I called it off. I said that um, he was, uh, you know, after the 10th round, there was, no, there was no reason to send him back out there and, and sacrifice him. You know, I thought he was done. And, uh and uh, and like I said, there was just no re- no need to go out there and sacrifice, uh, sacrifice him anymore. I, you know, with with the uh, with the referee coming to tell him, and he insisted that he tell him. And so, you know, I don't know if you noticed, know but um, his manager, uh, Henry Delgado, was uh, was you know he pushed he pushed uh, uh, Mike into telling him that 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 yes that he was when the referee asked, "Are you done?" And he goes, "Yes." He pushed him into into telling him, but Mike Mike was upset with us. That uh, that we stopped the fight, and uh, and and um, and you know, but at the end of the day, it's uh, we have a not, we have a job as well, and and that that's to protect our fighter, and for him to be able to come back and fight another day, or to live to talk about it. But um, you know, I I do believe that once the guy is done, and and you know, you know, deep in your heart, and you know your fighter, and you know he's done, he's done. And, and you save him from himself. Well, I completely agree, and that's what I heard. I heard you say, you know, he's done. Um, you know, and, and I would never think of Mike as a quitter. He's a what the warrior, and um, I thought it was a fantastic fight up to that point. Um, How is Mike doing today? Is he okay? I know he was very swollen. Everything okay? Yeah. yeah as, as far as I as far as I know, I tried I tried getting a hold of him yesterday, but. I just I just called, made that one call the one time and um, and and uh, he he said he was he, he took back he was okay and um, and I, I give him the space and I give him the time he has he has his manager and uh, and his and, and and the rest of the group out there 
and they're they're going to be checking up on him today, later on today, and they're going to give me an update. Um, I don't, I, I I've never been the type to um, overwhelm them. You know, I I'll just um, I'll I'll ask next couple of days as well. I'll be I'll be checking up on him, or or they'll give me updates on him, and and we'll we'll just take it from there. Right, and then what happens from now with Mike? Does he go on and? Will he have a, a you know Rios uh, Alvarado number three or what do you think uh, happens I, I, here? I I think I personally would like to see Mike fight Provodnikov again. I think that uh, Mike knows Mike knows deep inside his heart that that he can beat him and that and that he just has to uh, he just got to come back and he knows he knows that uh, that this is a fight that he must have. It's not about Rios now. It's about uh, Provodnikov. It's about getting right back in there again, and, and um, sure, he lost to him this time, and just the same way when he lost to Brandon Rios, he was, he said that uh, he said that he needs to go back, and um, and I think that if he does fight again, because I did ask him to, I I did ask him to think about maybe retiring, because uh, it's it's a brutal sport, and he's been he's been in a few wars there, you know, from from the moment that I've been with him with the cat with uh. With the first fight with uh, Prescott, and then Herrera, he took a little bit off, but then he had uh, Brandon Reels two times, and now this fight. So he's three out of three out of his last four fights have been like really, I mean, really brutal fights. And um, and and I that's why I said that's why I told him I said you know really you know think about retiring or but if you but if you wanna if you wanna come back then uh, let's, let's get back on let's get back on this and and. And make it right. Well, that's what Prophet was saying on the our you know last show. We were talking after we spoke to Mike, and he was saying that you know there have been like you're saying the the four brutal fights. Can he come back and have another war? Because you knew it was going to be a war. Um, and yeah, and then we also I wanted to ask you, you know, Mike had to make weight, so he didn't make the pound. He had to go and do what he had to do and come back. Did any of this have to do with him just not being ready as far as his weight is concerned? No, it, it had a the, the weight was my fault. That that's one hundred percent my fault because um, I had I have a I have my own scale, and uh, it's been the scale that I that we've always used for in the last maybe eight years, and uh, and I've always you know I am consistently getting getting it calibrated, and uh, nobody touches it but me. And no one, nobody else carries it but me, and uh, and it failed me on Friday, well, the day of the weigh-in. It was my my scale was a pound overweight, and um, but we had already checked on the official scale, and we were like pretty much on target. But it just so happens that it just it just failed on us. It, it, it it's electronic, so you know electronics they they eventually do give up, but they uh, they they break down too, so. Um, you know, my scale pretty much was at at fault. That's okay. So, okay. so it was this, yeah, it was the scale. Um, you know, what I like is that, and looking at your history and you know being around and knowing you for years, is that you know you will stop a fight no matter how important the fight is. If you think that your box, your fighter can't go on, that it's not good for your fighter, like when you were training your brother, Gennaro Hernandez, um, Chicanito. You know, with the Floyd Mayweather and the Oscar De La Hoya fights, both fights, you retired him. So do you ever hesitate or you always you always have their well-being in mind, especially your brother? Why, why, why would I hesitate? I mean, when a decision gets, when a decision gets made, it's, it's made. Um, I, I, um, okay, look, look at, we'll, we'll look at, let's look at my brother right now. My brother, when, when, when Oscar, when Oscar hit him with the uppercut two weeks before the fight, Shane Mosley broke uh, Gennaro's nose. It was broken when he get, he went into the fight. Two weeks later, he fights Oscar. Oscar hits him with an uppercut and it shatters his nose. So, um, I I wanted my brother to go one more round, but but he was he was in such he was in so much pain that he 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 decided that that he had enough. And so okay, then you have enough. You have enough. And um, he goes to the doctor, Cedar Sinai, and they say that's one of the worst broken noses that they've ever seen that he is he got he he was so lucky that that um uh, that it didn't go into his brain 
And so that you tell me how how you how would you feel hearing that from a doctor, and then you wanting him to go one more round. Of course. So, and then the second time, I told him not to be. He, I think my brother did really good on the in, in the seventh round. He shows uh, signs of life that that he was okay. That you know, you know, maybe he can do something because he lost the first six rounds. And then the seventh round with Floyd, I thought he he, he did pretty good where he held his own and, and was able to do do something. Then the eighth round came along, and I think it's the beginning of the of the eighth round. He gets hit with a left hook, or like a minute into the into the eighth round, he gets hit with a left hook. That uh, I saw my brother buckle a little. And and you're not gonna believe this, but I'm yet to ever see it on on TV. I can't see it, and so. Um, but I was there. I was. I'm seeing it live. And what I saw was my brother. My brother take a like a like a little step down, and and um, and I thought that that was it. And I told my dad and 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 the cut man John John Montes. I said, um, you know, whatever whatever my, whatever um, life my brother had left in him, to, to whatever will he had left in him. Was just taken away with him that punch, and now he's just pretty much on the defensive side. So there's no reason to keep sacrificing him round after round. You know, we'll just, we'll just, you know, uh, you know, we'll, we'll we'll retire him after this, after this, and move him up to the lightweight division because you know he had already had too much trouble making the 130 pounds. And that doesn't take away, that that doesn't take away uh, nothing from uh, Floyd and, and and how great of a fighter he was, and and he is. Because I thought before he was even phenomenal. Today he's just a smarter, better fighter. And uh and and, and, and the same thing with Oscar Deloya. He Oscar was in shape, he he he, he went in there, he got his win. And I don't use those those excuses because bottom line is that we went into that ring and we fought and we lost and that's it. But you're asking me why we retired them, this is the reason why I we gave up on the in those two fights. Now when after the after the the Mayweather fight, a week a week later, I get a phone call from the doctor, and he says, uh, "Where's your brother at?" And I said, uh, "He's probably out at a park." And he goes, "You can't be." I told him he was out there playing soccer, and he goes, "No, you got to get him. It's, an, it's it's very urgent that you get him. That you do not let him get any kind of blow to the head." There, I found I I found a spot of blood in uh, in his brain. Now that's why. Now. Had I not stopped the fight, I mean, there could have been worse consequences. Wow. No. Thank God that you stopped it. And did your dad or, or the cut man, anyone say, what, Are you crazy? He can still keep no. fighting. Does anyone ever fight you when you're in the corner and you see these things that they don't see? No, they they, they have no they have no say so. At the end of the day, I'm, you know, it's, it's my call and, and, I'm, and I take full responsibility for everything because when you're, when you're the head coach, then you're the head coach. That, that's that's what you're doing. Sa- Saturday night, when 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 Mike came back to the corner, uh, I saw that he was done. There was there was no reason to keep sacrificing him, you know. And uh, and and I made the call to say that you know it's uh, it's uh, you're you're done, man. You know you you have nothing left. And why am I going to send you back out there and to humiliate him, to to for everybody to say oh how brave Mike is and uh, or or how tough he is, you know, and, and I think I told you this, I, said, I I don't care what anybody says about him, whether it's good or bad, at the end of the freaking day, no, not one of those guys, not one of those people out there that criticizes him about whether he quit or not, pay his bills, or, or walk in his shoes, or, or, or are going to be there, you know, for everyone who criticizes him, says that he, he has no heart and he quit, send him $5, and watch how, I, I can almost guarantee you, he make a lot. Of, he'd have a whole lot of money, and 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 that's okay because at the end of the day, like I said, none of them are going to care about him whether he's doing good or or, or bad. No, so I, I don't yeah, really care. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me. Mm-hmm. I know that's the good thing about you, Rudy, is you never care what people think, and I think that's what makes you such a great head trainer is that you don't care, and you're you're not going to sacrifice your fighters. What do you think, Prophet? You have any questions? I'm sure you do. Yeah. Sure, Rudy. Uh, with, with your uh, brother Gennaro Hernandez, I thought the the crowning moment of his career was when he defeated Azuma Nelson. Uh, I remember it like it was yesterday. At the end of round seven, Azuma clocked Gennaro with a with a late blow to his neck. He was obviously in a lot of pain. It got to the point where 
the president of the WBC, Jose Suleiman, actually came up on the ring apron and said, Gennaro, we can disqualify Azuma, and you'll win the fight right now. But to his credit, you know, your brother was a, was a, was a great fighter. He said, I, I don't want to win it this way. I want to go to full 12 rounds. And to me, he kind of dominated Azuma. I was surprised that it was a split decision. Uh, I thought Gennaro clearly won eight or maybe even nine out of the 12 rounds. What are your, what are your memories of that fight? You know, um, it's uh, when my brother was 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 in the canvas. I told him, um, champions are made on the champions are made fighting, not on the facts. Remember, because uh, if, if you recall, the night before, Roy Jones had just got disqualified, and um, and we were we we're gonna have like another disqualification. But I didn't really care what happened in the in, in the Roy Jones fight. My whole thing was like, my brother, my brother, all he, all he had to do was just continue to to get up and keep continue to keep painting that masterpiece that he was doing it, and I and I just. I felt that um, that's what he he needed to do, and uh, it was he and I talking to each other. And I told him, uh, and that's why, like I said, I told him, champions are made on the champions are made fighting, not not on their backs. And so um, it, it, my brother goes, well, it's your call. And I go, well, I say we we get up and keep fighting. And he goes, he goes, he, he smiled at me. And he goes, fuck it, we're gonna we're gonna keep fighting. And that's it. That's the man, that's the man I know. And. Um, and everybody else around us, our manager, our promoter from Japan, and, and, and everybody else, you know, they were like, what are you guys doing? You know, are you, are you kidding me? I go, no. And then, uh, but here's the best one. Here's another another good one, too, is that Lawrence Cole, the referee, goes, all right, that's it. You guys got to continue fighting. All right, let's go. Everybody out of the ring. And I, and I told him, I said, no, the bell just rang, and we have a minute rest. And he looks at me, and, and uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. We have a one, and uh, and Lawrence Cole and I, and I will, you know that 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 um that kind of like um uh, we have a bond because of that that night. We we have that one bond because after the fight he came over and told me, really that was a great work, man, great corner corner man work because um uh, I would have never thought in a million years I would have never thought about that one minute that that just rang and yes you were right you still have that one minute and uh, and it bothers and it bothers even more time. You know, and but my brother, my brother did did the right thing. He got up, he fought, and he won, and he let no doubt. He left no doubt in that ring. And you're right. I don't I don't know where they got scripts in the from, but but at the end of the day, the the right decision was given, and he did win the title. And that's the best moment ever. And, and yeah. going back, to, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Dad. No, I was just saying, yeah, that was amazing. Ahead, you go, Prophet. You're on. And, and get, getting back to Alvarado for a minute, you know, Christy and I had said it on the show, and you mentioned it yourself. If you include the Mauricio Herrera fight, that's five consecutive wars for Mike, you know, with uh, British Prescott Herrera, the two wars with Rios and this past Saturday night with uh, Provodnikov. Uh, and I know, you know, Mike's a very prideful guy, and for the most part, he did stick to his game plan when he could, you know, he did a masterful job of moving in some rounds, but uh, Provodnikov did a great job of cutting off the ring, and, you know, there were times where Mike had no choice but to slug it out. Instead of maybe getting right back into the ring with Provodnikov, or maybe even uh, getting back into the ring with Rios if he was to upset Pacquiao, do you think it would behoove Mike to maybe take a tune-up fight to, to, you know, just to regain some confidence, you know, not be in such a a tough fight after five consecutive wars, or, or that's just simply not the kind of guy Mike is. He just wants to fight the best, and that's all he wants. Would you advise him maybe to take a tune-up fight in the interim? No, no. I I think that he has to he has to get right back in there and and let's let's start round eleven. Let, let's let's start where we left off. You know, it's um. See, today, also because you have to remember that um. Uh, if uh, if Mike was fighting next month, okay, let's let's get a tune-up fight, and then we can fight him like in the next in the next um, six months, and we can get three fights out of him. That would be great. Let's get this tune-up fight. But but being the way the business is today, I mean, he's gonna go another six months without fighting, and then what? The tuna? Are you kidding me? No, but these guys are athletes. These are professional athletes, that, and and when you get to this stage, it's about it's it, it's a business as well, and we gotta we gotta do what the what's best. Is, was in his best interest, and his best interest is our best interest as well. 
Right. And with um, Christy had mentioned it early in the interview with Kvetkin against Klitschko, I actually had a tirade on the show because I guess he did what he had to do, but it seemed that every time Kvetkin tried to engage in some sort of warfare, Klitschko would blatantly hold him. And even the round where he knocked down Kvetkin, what was it, three times, I don't think any of them were clean. Klitschko would land an uppercut and then throw him to the canvas. He would land a right hand and throw him to the canvas. And he's approaching all these legendary records, you know, most successful title defenses. And he may eventually pass uh, Larry Holmes and Joe Lewis in terms of title defenses. But And I ask you this because you're a hardcore boxing man. You can't really consider uh, Vladimir Klitschko as one of the great heavyweight champions of all time based on, to me, that disgraceful performance against Bevekin, can you? Well, man, um, it, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's his time right now. It's where he's at. And, and, uh, and at the end of the day, it, it's the results that he's given. And, and, um, uh, and that's, and they stand. But it, as far as I'm concerned, I'm like, I'm, you know, more power to him. Look, um, uh, Bovekin didn't do what he was supposed to do. Klitschko did what he does. He did what he does, and he won. And and I don't care how he does it, but but he wins. And so you know what? Good for him. Now, if you want to, if you want to win, then you better make adjustments. See, everybody makes all the everybody is is fighting for all the excuses for Povetkin because he Klitschko held him, he he pushed him, da da da. Well, well, let me, now my question to you is this: is what did Povetkin do to offset that? Uh, it, it didn't seem like he had much of an opportunity every time he tried to. So you find one. Yeah. But, but you find one. Hey, Richard, you find one because what, what are these guys doing in the gym? I look. I strongly and, and and I truly believe this. There's no problems. There's only solutions. You you find them, and if you can't find them, see when when you lose. Okay, Mike Alvarado lost. On 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 uh, on 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 Saturday, but but he gave it his all. Now, what if he didn't give it his all? Then we, I'd be pissed. I I, I would be really disappointed because he did not give it his all. I, I'd be I'd be like, man, he didn't even follow the the the, the plan. But at the end of the day, Paul Vickham was a better was a better fighter Saturday night. I still believe that Mike has. Everything to beat him, and he should beat him. It's just it's just the same way that I felt that after and the second time he fought Rios that he could beat him. I I still I truly believe that he can beat him. If I didn't think that he could beat him, then you know I, I I'd be the person to say, no nah, man, you know what, move on. You know sometimes some sometimes there's just some guys that just have your number and, and that's just the way it is. But I don't I don't think that right now. I, I truly don't believe that uh, Povetkin is a better fighter than. Than, uh, than Alvarado, and I'm not taking. Oh, no, uh, I'm, I'm not. You know, I'm not, I have nothing but respect for 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 Provotnikov and, and and his team, and, and you know, great for them. I'm happy that he's he's the world champion. As far as I'm concerned, he's now a two-time world champion because, in that second round when he dropped Bradley, that fight was over because when he got dropped and he stood up and fell down again, that's an automatically knockout, and. The referee made a human error, and uh, and and that's just the way the cards played out. I don't think I don't think that uh, Provodnikov would be as as popular, or or had 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 he won by knockout in two rounds. I think it it played out the way it was supposed to, and and, he, and he's gotten better for it, more publicity, more everything. Everything kind of lined it up better for him that. By him losing. Hmm. And now, with the, with the we... Alvarado... Go ahead. Go ahead. You can finish. Toss it. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I was just wondering, as the the trainer in that fight, round eight was the stuff that cavemen are made out of. I mean, Alvarado gets dropped twice, and at the end it's firing back on all cylinders. I mean, it was truly... It, it was probably the round of the year, truth be told. Um... What, what, what was your advice to, to Mike after that round? Did you know that this was sort of, you know, his, his 
a last ditch effort for him to get back well, into the fight? I mean, it had to have been. Well, I mean, well, it must have been a well, different source for you. Well, remember that in the, in the ninth round, he did a little bit better with his defense, and he was able to keep him off. Um, I thought he did really well in the ninth round. He enough to even win the round. Sure that uh, Provodnikov came out and put the pressure in, and, and did, you know, he, he did his thing. But I also, I also felt that um, that uh, Mike did some pretty good moves and and he, and he landed some pretty good shots as well. And but uh, but that's but that's besides the point. But he showed life again that that he was still in the fight. So then the tenth round comes around. And um, and you know for the first half of the tenth of the tenth round, you know Mike is in the fight. You know it's still he's still in the fight, and um, and it wasn't until like like the thirty forty seconds of the last uh, of the of the last uh, minute of the of the round where he got caught with a pretty good shot, and uh, he went back to the ropes, and, and pretty much and, and and he didn't he didn't um, he didn't um, he wasn't able to. Um, he wasn't able to just look him, and uh, and he wasn't able to do what he was, you know. He he got hurt. He got hurt in that ten round, and 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 it was over. Well, 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 you, uh, you order your food I'll, now, Rudy? <laughs> no, I'm trying to help this lady move her car. Oh, so nice. You, you're just a multitasker. Hey, I just wanted to ask you before we we but, let you go. Um, Hopefully you're going to go off to Australia today for the uh, Shane Mosley fight. What do you think? Do you have uh, Shane, or well, of course you, you're going to be in his corner? But how do you think he'll do against Anthony Mundine? I think um, I think he knocks him out. Wow. I, I think he knocks him out. So I think that Shane has everything to to, to knock him out. So you know, I, I think I think Shane, Shane, Shane's been go ahead. What's your prediction? So, what round do you think he's going to knock him out? In? I'm so used to the prophet predicting. So, what do you think, Rudy? I I think he stops him in uh in in the later rounds. I th I think he'll he'll just he'll just be too much. It, it'll it'll be too much for him, and uh, he does really well in, in, in stopping him. Well, that would be great. They're going for the WBA international light middleweight title. And prophet, you were telling me something before about this. Uh, this character, Anthony Mundane. Why don't you mention to Rudy, see if he's heard that. Yeah, but it's no big secret, Rudy, that Anthony, you know, he likes uh, the flashy entrances uh, in his press conferences, and he, he often says a lot of stinging uh, comments about his yes. opponents. Uh, he questioned the heritage of Daniel Gill, being that, you know, they're both from Australia. And he actually went uh -huh. so far as to say that, that America brought it upon themselves. Uh, with the whole 9-11 attack, because they, they didn't treat um, Muslims all that well, that they, they brought the 9-11 attack on themselves. And he's had a love-hate relationship with, with, with his own country. Um, does that give Sugar Shane Mosley maybe extra motivation to, you know, shut uh, Mundine's mouth? I mean, for the most part, he's been actually quiet and he's been respectful of Shane. So it kind of made me nervous that maybe he knows that he's in over his head. But for the most part, does that give Mosley any extra motivation to shut his mouth, even though he has been, you know, quite respectful this time around, but oh. for previous comments that he has made? No, Mo Mos Mosley, if I, the Mosley that I know is uh, he'll just, he'll, he'll just like whatever. It's, it's nothing personal, and it's not, um, Mosley is about getting in the ring and doing his job, and, and that's to go in there and, and seek, seek to win by a knockout. And uh, because at the end of the day, it's... Uh, you know, the guy can say any, any guy can say anything they want to say, and you want to sound you want to sound and be stupid, then that's that's your prerogative. You know, if if, if it's attention you want, and, and and that's the only way of getting it, then you know, so be it. But that's uh, that's that's just tricky here. And uh, like I said, uh, at the end of the day, I think um, Shane Shane will go in there and 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 do what he does best, and that's fight and perform. But, that, that's the one thing about Shane is that you're gonna, you're always gonna get a fighter in him. He's always gonna give you 110. percent He's there to win, you know, and uh, and he'll give you, and he'll do his best. And and you can't, you can't ask for more. And that is true. He always gives 110. percent I agree. Well, Rudy, thank you so much. And if you leave tonight, have a safe trip. And thank you for coming on our show. Hopefully, you'll come back again. And uh, that's well, it. So. 
I hope you. I know you. I hope you got to eat your lunch and uh, help the lady and do everything else while we were talking. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks. Thanks for the call and uh, right. for permitting me to be here. And until uh, the next one. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Rudy. Have a All good right. day. Take care. Thanks, Prophet. Bye, right, Rudy. Thanks. Bye, guys. You guys have a good one. You too. Have All a right. good one. Well, there you have it. That was Rudy Hernandez. That was a pretty in-depth interview, if I can say so myself. Uh, we will be back in just a minute. We're going to go to a commercial. We're going to see if Gennady is done with his workout. We're going to come back, and then a little later, we're going to get into talking about the interview. I'm sure Stephen over there from Denver and Vivek especially have something to say since they weren't involved in the conversation. And we're going to get to our topic. So stay tuned with more Real Combat Media Boxing Radio. This is Real Combat Media Radio. Check us out at realcombatmedia.com. While you're there, check out the check out the Feed the Poor link on the bottom of every article, and you can send a donation if you're interested. That is, once again, on the bottom of every article as well as on the top of the website. If you are an MMA, boxing, or fitness business and interested in sponsoring our website or radio podcast, send us an email. Advertising at realcombatmedia.com. Once again, that is advertising at realcombatmedia.com. Make sure to check out the Real Combat Media MMA and Boxing Store at the top of the menu at realcombatmedia.com. We carry a collection of products. We have the Cardio Mask, which is excellent for all fighters, endurance athletes, and serious fitness enthusiasts. Once you are in the Real Combat Media Store, click on the banner on that page. We also carry Alpha Brain. Alpha Brain is a great and natural product which activates your brain's neurotransmitters and helps you think more clearly, which improves brain function. You can also purchase the world's healthiest plant protein, which comes from hemp. There are many other products online on the online store, and click on the On It banner at the Real Combat Media Store, and you can purchase Alpha Brain and other health products. Use the discount code Real Combat Media, and you will receive 10% off at the checkout store on the On It. That is O N N I T on the banner at Real Combat Media Store. Buckle up, here we go. Let's get this show started. Welcome back to Real Combat Media Boxing Radio. This is episode 32. I'm your host, Christy Rosario, still here with the Boxing Prophet, also Vivek Wallace and Steven Johnson. If you'd like to call us live at 347-324-5998, you can Twitter us at Real Combat Media or go on Facebook at Real Combat Media in the search bar. Well, we are back, and Gennady is still training because this is actually his training time. I called yesterday, and he was sparring at this time. So he is definitely coming on, but Abel Sanchez, his coach, just asked if we could take about maybe another, you know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and then he'll come on, which is actually really good because I wanted to talk a little bit about Rudy's interview. And, um, you know, Steven Johnson is in Denver, and I wanted to hear he went to the weigh-in, he went to the fight. I wanted to hear what Stephen over there thinks. How are you doing, Stephen? I'm doing good, Christy. I, um, it was especially nice to hear Rudy um, say that, uh, you know, it was all his fault. Um, I, I, I just think it was an excellent commentary from an excellent trainer who uh, knows his fighter, knows when his fighter's had enough, knows when his fighter can continue. Um, for the last couple of days, I've been embroiled in conversations of uh, most of them based on the nature of, of saying Mike, Mike was a quitter. And I agree with uh, Rudy 100%. When you look at the last five fights he's had, I mean, he, he had Breeders Prescott, he had Mauricio Herrera, he had two with Brandon Rios, and then this fight with uh, Provokin. Anybody that would uh, Provodnikov, anybody that would question his heart and say that he's a quitter, um, I just have no respect for those people. Um, and and like, uh, like Rudy said, anyone that would make those kind of comments, they've either never been in the ring before or they just, uh, they're just they just idiots. And um, like, I, like you already mentioned earlier, I was there at the fight. And at the end of the eighth round, I think most everyone there, I sat directly behind Dan Raphael, I think most of us were at the point where, um, you know, he's probably got another round or so to show what he can do. And I'll tell you, um, Vivek and 
Christy and Richard in the ninth round. Um, late in the ninth round, I saw Mike hit uh, Provodnikov with the right hand with everything he had, and it didn't budge him. And right then, I thought to myself, they can stop the fight any time he wants. They want because when you got a guy that's coming after you like Provodnikov was coming after Mike, and Mike can't hurt him at all, and, and Mike was already hurt, that puts, makes it a dangerous situation. And, um, you know, that old adage of uh, we want to get, you know, which most boxers still carry about, you know, I'll get carried out on my shield. That's some old and archaic bullshit that, you know, I don't want to hear about. Um, these guys have a duty. Most of these guys have a family. They have a wife and kids, and it's their duty as far as I'm concerned. In a piece that I wrote earlier, um, just like a policeman, a fireman, you know, anyone that puts their life on the line on their job when they know that their life is potentially on the line, it's still their job to get home to their family. Um, and sometimes, like Rudy said, you have to save them from themselves. And that's what I thought Rudy, uh, Henry Delgado, um, Sean Bilhauer, um, even though Sean was not in the corner, but Rudy and, and Henry in that corner, I thought that's what they did. I know Mike didn't like it because, as any boxer does, he never likes to have criticism of how he handled himself um, in a fight where, um, to all of us, it looks like it's, there's nothing he can do. But I just thought that Mike, like Rudy said, Mike had given it all he had. He had nothing left. The only thing he could do was really get permanently damaged, and I never want to see that out of any fighter. Yeah, I totally agree. And, you know, what we're hearing and reading are the haters are just, you know, they never got in the ring. They've never fought. They never felt what it was like never been hit in the face, and it's just wrong. And, you know, I'm really glad that Rudy came on. I'm glad that you're here, Stephen. Um, I want to hear from Vivek. Hey, Vivek. Hey, guys. Yeah, you know, I would, I would co-sign what Steve was just saying. I mean, first off, I'll say that was a great interview, guys. Very compelling. A lot of, uh, a lot of meat in that interview. Vivek, you sound like your... you're... Vivek, you sound like you're, yes. you're far away. <laughs> you sound far away. Are you on a speaker? Can, can you hear? Can you hear me better now? No, I'm not actually. Oh yeah, that's a can, little better. Yeah, that's better. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, okay, yeah, no. What I was saying is that that was uh, for starters. That was a very, very nice interview. Very compelling with a lot of meat uh, to take away from that with some in-depth insight. But uh, I mean, my position on the fight and, and the the aftermath uh, with a lot of people calling him quitter, et cetera. Uh, personally, I. I mean, I don't know. I, I I try not to get too involved when when fans get that way because it's always going to be knuckleheads that go there. But the reality is that uh, I think the guy gave it all he had. Uh, I'm curious to know more about the true conditioning coming into the fight. I mean, he looked good, uh, but the weight issue was what it was. And uh, it just really makes me wonder if maybe he didn't have as much in the tank, which led to him not having that power. I mean, I've seen Alvarado connect several times before with other fighters. I didn't feel very early in that fight that he had what I've seen uh, him have in the past. And I'm just, uh, I really question whether there was a little more to that, maybe some underlying issues in camp that, that were not not uh, dispersed, you know, and, and that makes sense because nobody wants to have excuses after a loss. But I'm very curious to know if there was, if there was more to it because I just, you know, from the moment that fight started, I saw Ruslan Provodnikov come out very aggressive, cutting the ring off, and even though Alvarado showed his warrior spirit, I, I just didn't think that he was totally right that night. And uh, we may never know, but, you know, he gave it his all, and, and I think that, like Steve was saying a moment ago, you know, he does have an obligation to his family that exceeds anything he owes us, his fans and media. And I think that he, he, whether he agreed to have it stop, whether it was Rudy's call, whatever it was, I don't think anyone should even care. At the end of the day, they have that right. He's the one in there taking the punches. Uh, he's the one who has to, to uh, live to die another day, so to speak, and provide for his family. He has that right. And uh, even though fight fans may not like it, I, I support it and I'll continue to support him as a fighter. Uh, I do think, though, that uh, going forward, they may want to – I mean, I know the big money fights, is, is these guys are prize fighters, not prize fighters, but uh, I don't know if I want to see him in there in that type of fight anytime right away. 
I, I just think that he, he needs to, to give himself a little time to heal. It's been a long road, you know, and, and a very rigorous road. And uh, at the end of the day, I, I just I wouldn't want to see anything go wrong with the guy. Mike's a very good guy, and uh, I, I wish him the best in, in his road to recovery. You know, it's well, funny that's what you're, you say that's that. That's what you were and, saying, Crawford, right? Listen, I, was, uh, I was a little bit concerned that Mike, uh, like you said, coming off of the four wars that he had previously and then coming home to fight in front of his family and friends here in Denver, I was actually surprised they took the Provodnikov fight. I would have thought yeah. it would have been something a little easier, um, something where the fans would have been, uh, would have been, you know, totally. I guess I hate to say, but you know, um, someone that was handpicked uh, that Mike uh, wouldn't have as much trouble with. You know, uh, Provodnikov, um after that fight with Timothy Bradley, he's nothing but confidence. You know, nothing but confidence, and uh, I just thought that was a dangerous uh, a fight to take. Um, I'm hoping that – I was hoping that, and I think it came off that way, um, that everyone across the country got to see how rabid the Denver fans were about this fight. I mean, the place was sold out, the First Bank Center. Um, the undercard had built up. You know, we had Juan Baby Bull Diaz um, from Houston there on the undercard. And, and as you saw when – I'm hoping you saw when the – by the time the HBO portion, televised portion came on, the crowd was at a fever pitch. Mike came out. Um, in his Bronco orange and and gear, I mean, um, it was just it was just a great night of boxing action here in Denver. And to, to, to hear the negative comments from a lot of the people here in Denver, I was I was actually shocked shocked, you know, that 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 would come out that way. I, I like I said, I'm sitting right there at ringside, and I agree with Vivek. Um, and even Rudy said it. You know, he said he was here in Denver in training camp for 23 days, and he was concerned about conditioning and said if he had to do it over again, he'd be here for three months. So I think there was some concerns about conditioning, as Rudy said. But once again, Rudy took it on himself um, as a trainer, saying, hey, it was my fault. If I'm in the corner, I, I absorb all of the um, controversy. And he put it all on himself. But like Vivek said, there's some – there's some other issues that, you know, probably will be taken care of again. Uh, once again, I agree with Vivek. I don't think that getting back in the ring again with Provodnikov is a smart thing. Um, you know, the guy, he's a beast. I mean, there's no doubt about it. He's a beast. And if you don't have a plan to fight him and you're able to stick to that plan, because you know what his plan is. His plan is I'm coming for 12 rounds. So you've got to be able to deal with that for 12 rounds. And after seven rounds, after eight rounds, after nine rounds, Mike just didn't have it, what it was going to take to keep him off of him. So, you know, the critics can be critical of anything they want to, but to call this guy a quitter and um, that he has no heart, not only is it absurd, but it's ridiculous. Right. Well, that's what Prophet was saying, too, right, Prophet? You were saying how you want him to have a tune-up fight. Yes, I, I told Rudy that um, you can't continuously be in fight of the year candidates every fight. You know, we need to forget about a confidence booster. Alvaro knows uh, what he brings to the table in terms of skills in a fight. He just needs sort of a tune-up fight. You know, stay busy, but don't get in there with, with, with guys that just love to brawl. Because, you know, we, we, I, I don't know how much more, and we said this on the show, uh, we don't know how much more uh, Alvarado's body can, can take. And um, I agree with what Stephen and, and Vivek both said uh, in terms of uh, the, the fight itself, Provodnikov was, was just a beast. You know, he did a better job of re than Rios did of cutting off the ring, uh, he, uh, the rounds in which Alvarado couldn't move and stick the jab in his face. He had no choice but to slug with him. Um, you know, I went on social media after the fight, and a lot of people said that Alvarado looked sick at the weigh-in and that he looked gone, so that might have affected his performance. But, you know, you take a look at, at, at round eight when he went down. You know, Tony Weeks could have counted to ten. Alvarado got up a little bit late after that first knockdown. But Weeks gave him the benefit of the doubt, let him continue. He got knocked down again and then fought back so valiantly, you know, for, for a guy that got knocked down twice in a round. And Provodnikov went to the body like a monster. And for anyone to question the heart of Alvarado after numerous wars that he's been in, is just foolish. Uh, I, I think the weight did affect his performance, but, you know, if they were to fight three or four times, I think Provodnikov is just, you know, 
a harder guy. I think he would win all four fights. I think Mike should go back to the drawing board and take take a tune up fight. You know, and I don't know what what the outcome of Pacquiao Rios is going to be, but everyone wants to see a third Rios Alvarado fight. So maybe after Mike takes maybe even a couple of tune up fights, maybe they can revisit a Rios Alvarado three somewhere down the road. But to question Mike's heart is total nonsense. I mean, it was a great fight to be to be frank. Uh, it's my second favorite fight this year. Uh, Bradley Provanikov is still my fight of the year. And now Alvarado Provanikov is my second favorite fight that took place this year. So it's just interesting how Provanikov now has put himself in the two uh, top fights of the year. And in terms, real quick, of, of what's next, because, you know, I, I go on social media a lot, or at least I try to, and everyone's saying how Provanikov should fight the winner of of um, Rios Pacquiao or a rematch with Bradley, did we forget about a certain fighter named Danny Garcia who just upset uh, Lucas Matisse on the undercard of Mayweather Canelo? Uh, I know that it probably won't happen because of the Bob Arum and uh, Golden Boy pointless feud, but I think uh, if they could somehow come to a serious negotiations, a Danny garcia Provanikov fight, for me, would would be a great, great, great fight. Yeah, I agree. I think that would be a, a good fight. I'd like, actually like to see uh, Lucas Matese and Danny Garcia again because I, I just don't think we saw, you know, the Lucas Matese that we usually see, and I, I think he's still there. I'd like to see that again. What do you think, Vivek? Would you like to see that fight, or would you like to see another one with uh, Provodnikov? Well, with uh, I mean, with with Provodnikov, honestly, I wish that he did not have one more fight under top rank because I think his promoter would definitely be ready to do business with Golden Boy. The Golden Boy stables right now are just, I mean, they're incredibly deep, and and I think that there's so many fights that could be made on that side. You know, a lot of people have, have mentioned the names uh, Matisse or Garcia, stuff like that. Uh, one guy I'd love to see him fight stylistically, because I think it will bring the fight out of him, and it will require Provisnikov to go up a little bit, but this guy hasn't been there very long himself. Uh, Adrian Broner. Uh, a lot of people was critical of Broner in, in his fight against Malinaji, uh, but I was quick to point out that statistically, uh, he was on par with his career numbers. He had a legendary, I don't want to say legendary, but a very acclaimed and accomplished fighter like Paulie Malinaji actually has statistics that were well under his career averages in every major statistical category. So I thought that Broner, you know, he fought the fight he needed to fight against a guy that's fast and elusive. But someone who comes to Bane that will force him to fight would show us a lot more about who Adrian Broner really is. So stylistically, uh, I would love to see a fight like that personally. I thought about that about fight myself, Vivek. I, I I um like you said I don't know well you know what because Broner was so quick to jump up and take on Malinaji he shouldn't be afraid to uh to get in there and go with uh, uh Provodnikov I would hope that Provodnikov people would would actually call him out um uh, and see what they what they'll do with it you know um uh I have been long have been of the opinion that um Adrian Broner has a lot of talent but he also has a lot of a lot of holes and I think one of the holes is like you said he hasn't had anyone that's really had the power. We, we'll, we might get a chance to see a little bit of what happens with uh, Marcos Maidana when they fight, but I don't think Maidana really has uh, the, the same power that uh, Provodnikov has and, and the uh, tenacity. You know, uh, one thing you got to see Saturday night when uh, Ruslan Provodnikov is that he's tenacious and he's relentless. And well, um, not not. Not only that, I was going to say quickly, what I love about him, and, and I thought this was interesting because a lot of people made it seem as if uh, he was some rock'em, sock'em robot, which he's looked like in the past. I mean, let's be honest. But the thing that I love, if, if you look at the adjustments, he showed me that he's a thinking fighter. He made three key adjustments during that fight that I didn't give him enough credit before to think he would make. You know, if, if you look – at the way he cut off the ring. He didn't do that against Bradley. He, he didn't do that. And that showed elevation right there in his game. But aside from that, one of the biggest things I noticed with him, if you notice at one point he would lean in and go shoulder to head pretty much, 
and jumped mm-hmm. out and positioned himself just in enough uh, space to land that big left and get out of the way. But beyond that, if you really look at it, the key adjustment he made that to me was uh, not to put him in the same same breath. People are going to laugh, but it's a brilliant move that I would see someone only like a Mayweather pull. What he did was he came in there really aggressive and got Alvarado blood pumping, and he got him really aggressive. And when Alvarado got in full aggressive mode, he slowed the action down. So he had him where he wanted physically, but Provotnikov had Alvarado where he wanted him mentally, and that was brilliant. You, you don't see many fighters adjust that way, and I think that that was really the change in, uh, of the whole fight, personally. Oh, I agree. And, you know, there was another thing, and I think uh, 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 the Prophet uh, spoke on it a, earlier. Um, there were several times in the fight, and I'm sitting on the south side of the ring, and all I got to see was straight, I mean, Provodnikov landed some crushing body shots, guys. I'm telling you some body shots that I was actually surprised that Mike uh, was able to withstand. I mean, this guy, he was really uh, a workmanlike effort that he put in. Vivek, you're 100% right. I had never seen him cut the ring off before like he did on, on Mike, and it was controlled. You know, it wasn't just chase, run, and, and try to bang. No, he cut the ring off and took his time, moved in, delivered the shots he wanted to make, and then moved out and said, let's see what he does. And, and it was, they were prepared. They were really prepared, and I won't take anything away from them. Um, I thought Provodnikov and his camp did an excellent job. Um, they actually had some um, sparring work here at Grudge Gym over in Arvada uh, with uh, one of my favorite guys here, uh, Manny Perez. He did, got in some work with him, Giovanni Merceron. Um, another up-and-coming guy we've got here. But he got in some good work some, with some guys that they all had told me, this guy delivers some serious body punches. And he did that with Mike. And like I said, I, I just I just think that Mike gave it all he had. And, if, you know, come back and have a chat at another day, that's fine. Um, Rudy says that he thinks that he should get back in there right away with Vrodnikov. I don't think that – I would not – I would to agree with you guys. I would think uh, – um, you know, a tune-up fight would be more in line. But, hey, Rudy knows more than I know, so I'll go with Rudy. But regardless, whatever happens, if they do decide to go it again, whatever decides to happen in the route with Mike Alvarado, they need to be more prepared. And Rudy seems to think that it's a lot has to do with conditioning and him being, being in camp earlier. So that's what needs to happen. All right, guys, we are going to go to a commercial. Great conversation, though. I love it. And we have to go, though, and come back a minute and 32 seconds because we want to talk about also Bernard Hopkins, uh, Moran. We want to talk about Peter uh, Chocolate. I like to call him Kid Chocolate. I don't know if he'd go for that. And uh, the King, El Rey Rosado. Okay, we will be right back with Real Combat Media Boxing Radio. This is Real Combat Media Radio. Check us out at realcombatmedia.com. While you're there, check out the check out the feed the poor link on the bottom of every article, and you can send a donation if you're interested. That is once again on the bottom of every article, as well as on the top of the website. If you are an MMA, boxing, or fitness business and interested in sponsoring our website or radio podcast, send us an email. Advertising at realcombatmedia.com. Once again, that is advertising at realcombatmedia.com. Make sure to check out the Real Combat Media MMA and Boxing Store at the top of the menu at realcombatmedia.com. We carry a collection of products. We have the Cardio Mask, which is excellent for all fighters, endurance athletes, and serious fitness enthusiasts. Once you are in the Real Combat Media Store, click on the banner on that page. We also carry Alpha Brain. Alpha Brain is a great and natural product which activates your brain's neurotransmitters and helps you think more clearly, which improves brain function. You can also purchase the world's healthiest plant protein, which comes from hemp. There are many other products online on the online store, and click on the on it banner at the Real Combat Media Store, and you can purchase Alpha Brain and other health products. Use the discount code Real Combat Media, and you will receive 10 percent off at the checkout store on the on it. That is O N N I T on the banner at Real Combat Media Store. Buckle up, here we go. Let's get this show started. Hey, we're back with Real Combat Media Boxing Radio, episode 32. I'm your host, Christy Rosario. Still here with the boxing prophet, Vivek Wallace and Stephen Johnson. 
Live callers, 347-324-5998. You can find us on Twitter at Real Combat Media or Real Combat Media in the search bar on Facebook. I want to tell you the fights that are coming up. It's a lot of fantastic fights. It's interesting how they are mostly all in New York. Um, exactly. We, not all. We go to Macau for uh, Rios and Pacquiao, as we know. But, okay, Bernard Hopkins versus Carl Morant and Peter Quinlan versus Gabriel Rosado, October 26th on Showtime. Triple G, Gennady Golovkin, who will be on here in just a little while, versus Curtis Stevens on HBO November 2nd. We did have a promo out. It said Showtime. It was a mistake. It is, they're definitely on HBO. Rocky Martinez versus Mikey Garcia and Nonito Donaire versus Vic Darchinian, number two, November 9th on HBO. Andre Ward versus Edwin Rodriguez, November 16th on HBO. Manny Pacquiao versus Brandon Rios, November 23rd on pay-per-view. Then we have our, what is that, triple header, 12 Seven. So December 7th in New York, of course, Zab Judah versus Paul Malinaji. We're going to see who owns Brooklyn. Uh, Austin Trout versus Irislandi Lara and Sakio Bika versus Anthony Durrell. We have so much, so much going on. And we want to move on over, talk about Gabriel Rosado, the king, versus Peter. Peter, Peter. Okay. Kid Chocolate, Kid Chocolate, I don't know if you'd appreciate that, but <laughs> Peter Quillen, okay, Kid Chocolate. So let's see, we have Peter Quillen, and his, he has won 29 with 21 KOs. He's lost nothing, never lost anything. He has definitely got a great record. And then you have El Rey, the king, Rosado, who has won 21, 13 knockouts, lost six, and he's been KO'd twice. So it is uh, being set up there. What do you think, Boxing Profit? It's going to be, I think it's going to be a tougher fight than most people expect. Uh, Rosado's record is a little bit, you know, misleading. He does hold victories over Jesus Soto, Karras, and Suku Paddle, but he has lost his last two fights. He took a horrible beating uh, against Triple G, who we'll have later on in the show, and he lost a very controversial decision to Jay Lee on Love on one of the Mayweather uh, undercards. But Rosado does throw. I think his volume punching will give Peter Quillen a lot of trouble early. He does throw a lot of combinations. Quillen relies more on his power and should rely more on his boxing ability, if you ask me. He's got a very underrated jab, which he doesn't use. He's obsessed with throwing power shots. But Quillen does have some nice victories on his resume as well. He retired Winky Wright. Uh, dominated pretty much every round of that fight, beat up on former contender Antoine Eccles. I think the key in this fight will be how does Peter uh, Quillen adjust to Rosado's work rate? I think for every one shot that Quillen throws, Rosado's going to land four or five in return. And how does Rosado handle Quillen's power after taking that horrific beating from Triple G? So I think the early rounds will be relatively close. I think it could be a 4-2 fight in Quillen's favor or even a 3-3 fight in terms of rounds after the sixth round. But I think eventually, uh, you know, Rosado will wear down. Quillen will, will, will start to throw more combinations uh, in bunches later on in the fight. Rosado will get brave for his own good, uh, too brave, and go for the knockout. Quillen will probably drop him in the 10th round, and I think you'll see the heart of Rosado. Rosado will manage to go to distance. But in the end, I see it being an 8-4 to four fight uh, in terms of, of rounds one. I, I think Quillen will win a pretty competitive, unanimous decision victory. But Rosado will have, you know, his moments. The notion that Quillen's going to roll over Rosado and win in, in one-sided fashion, I just don't see it happening. I think Rosado's, you know, very underrated in the sense that, you know, he always comes to fight, but he'll be a little bit outclassed. You know, Quillen's just too talented uh, at this stage of his career. So it'll be a competitive fight, but I like Quillen uh, by unanimous decision uh, eight rounds before. All right, and let's just make sure everyone knows that it was actually a no contest with Jay Leon Love with uh, Rosado because 
Uh, they had a split decision for Love, and it was overturned after Love tested positive for a banned diuretic. So it's now called a no contest. I don't know why. I think it should have um, been given to Rosado, don't you? I don't understand that part. Um, all right. Vivek, what do you think on this fight? Well, I think all things remaining equal. Uh, Peter Quillen should win the fight. I'm, I'm looking at probably, I would say, uh, eight rounds to four, possibly even in nine to three. But there's always a wild card. And, and I think the wild card in, in this particular fight, you know, Rosado is not a guy who, you know, he's not a skills guy, but he isn't a bum skill-wise either. He has a great chin. He went life and death with GGG, and, uh, I mean, he showed me more heart than I've seen in a lot of fighters in that fight. Um, what I'm getting at, and I, I say this to say this, I don't think that, you know, when we look at his tenure and his time in the sport, most of, actually all of his bigger fights, he's lost. And he's not the type of guy that I really look at as being uh, some journeyman or some stepping stone forever because he does show a learning curve and, and he's moved pretty well in some extent. So long story short, I, I think that the wild card here is that he's due a breakout fight where he actually gets the nod in, in one of those really tough fights that most expect him to lose. This is the stage that those type of fighters look for, you know, a chance to showcase their talents. They have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Uh, I like Quillen, all things remain an equal, but I, I do think that we could get some interesting results coming into Saturday night. All right, and even let's hear what you have to say. Well, the guys are pretty much, uh, I'm on board. I, I'm thinking that uh, Peter Quillen should be able to pull this one out. Um, I think, was, uh, you know, Gabriel Rosado is a guy that, you kind of got to feel good for him. I, I agree with Vivek and, and with uh, the prophet that, you know, he's a guy that, uh, um, you know, they probably could have put around somebody for one that was a little more flashy or something, but Rosado deserves it. I think he, he deserves it on some, from his past performances. And, and then you take into, uh, into, fact that, into consideration that Quillen is pretty limited in his opponents uh, since he's with Al Heyman and Golden Boy. Um, can't find anybody from top rank, so he's pretty much, pretty much there. We know, you know, with uh, Rosado being ranked what number eight, number nine, something like that in WBO, not very impressive. But you know, he has a way of, uh, like Vivek said, he has a way of uh, um, getting in there and making a competitive fight that it's not, that he's not supposed to be on paper. This fight looks like uh, Quillen should be able to stop him in seven or eight rounds, but knowing what we get from Rosado, and he's he's definitely inspired and he's fired up. Um, it's going to be a good, good and competitive fight, but I agree. Eight four, possibly nine three, something like that will be right uh, when it all ends up. So for an upset with Rosado, what do we need, guys? What will happen, and what could be an upset against Kid? Well, for an upset for Rosado, the only way it'd be an upset is if he were to knock out Peter Quillen. That's the only way he can win. I don't think he can win. A decision, so I think the upset would be, and that would be a major upset if you were to knock out Peter Quillen. That would be yeah. a major upset. That's true, especially on paper. When you look at it on paper, Zavak, you were going to say something? No, no, no. I was just agreeing totally. I, I think his his best chance to win is the stoppage, and uh, in down came close. That was a very interesting fight with Kid Chocolate, but. Um, I don't know what he can do other than a knockout to, to get the victory, but I don't know what it is with this fight. I've just had a really weird feeling because no one, just like Provotnikov coming in with Alvarado, few people gave him the shot. Few people saw him being able to make adjustments. You know, the funny thing about it, when we looked a week prior to the Provotnikov-Alvarado fight, we had, uh, we had Marquez coming in on a high of a victory and Tim Bradley coming in with something to prove after a fight he won that no one thought he should lose. Well, coming into the Provodnikov Alvarado fight, it was Alvarado coming in on the high and the guy who also came in with something to prove who got the nod. This fight is going to follow that very same sequence where you got a guy who came off a, a victory, everyone's expecting a win against a guy who no one thinks can make the necessary adjustments, who feels that he can. And I think that uh, 
you know, like I say, all things are made an equal quill and shit, get the knot. But I just, I have a really weird feeling with this fight for some reason. I don't know why. So, are you kind of like the prophet? You know, you have prophecies on what's going to happen with fights with that? <laughs> well, I, I'm not I'm not good enough at that to, to earn the name prophet, so I guess he's ahead of me in that regard. But uh, maybe we are alike because I've I've had that uh, I've had that inclination with this fight, and I don't know why because it's clearly a kid chocolate fight. But I just think that this could, in some strange way, be um, Rosado's breakout fight. Well, Vivek, you know, if you keep it up and this happens, you might have to buy a Prophet robe. But is that okay, Prophet, if he actually bought one, a robe like yours? <laughs> well, like what do you, you think? The, well, like you said at the beginning of the program, we're all one big happy family, and I, I thank you for reminding me that the uh, J. Lee, J. Lee on Love Rosado decision was overturned because of the diuretic. But I see where Vivek is coming from. I don't think Rosado, mm-hmm. though, has the power to knock out Quillen, but... I think he can out-hustle him, and I think the key to pulling off this upset, and, and Vivek is right, Rosado is due. You know, he's, he's earned his dues, and he's just, he needs that breakout fight, and this is the perfect fight, I think, stylistically wise for him to do it. If you notice, uh, and, you, and you watch Peter Quillen's fights, he lands power shots, but he doesn't land them in combinations. He'll pose after he lands power shots to admire his work. The key is for yeah. Rosado to handle the power shots well, and believe me, if he can take Triple G's best punches without going down, he can take Quillen's punches. And the key is just to land four or five punches in return. Out-hustle Quillen. Uh, if you're going to lure Quillen into a street fight, I, I think you can out-throw him and outland him. And, and I think Quillen's never been in that situation before. So I, I think Rosado, stylistically-wise, if, you know, if, if the Triple G fight didn't take a lot out of him, and he has something left in the tank, he can, and, and, you know, and he brings his A game, he can throw a lot of punches and just try and unnerve Quillen. Quillen's going to have to be active. Quillen can't throw one punch at a time and win this fight. He does have power uh, in both hands, but Rosado could conceivably out-hustle him. We're talking, you know, natural athletic ability. Sure, uh, the fight is there for Quillen to win, but it's also, uh, you know, you have to impose your IQ as well, your boxing IQ, as well as your talents. So the, the key is for, for Quillen, he better throw more punches because if he admires his work and he poses, Rosado's going to keep on throwing punches, whether it's to the face or to the body. So I could see a situation where Rosado, at least early and maybe even later, if, if, if his confidence builds during the fight, can out-hustle Quillen. That's the only way I see him winning the fight. I don't think he can knock out Quillen, but I think he can out-throw him and outland him just enough to, you know, win a decision if Quillen poses to admire his work too often. Mm. Remember the special with Gennady, too, and how, um, I mean, yeah, he took some punches, and how uh, Rosado was like, wow, that guy hit hard. I thought that was pretty interesting and kind of... I don't know, I thought it was very open and honest for Rosado just to uh, speak like that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the fight, and, you know, like you guys say, on paper, it looks like kid chocolate, but, you know, El Rey, the king, you never know about the king. He could come forward. You guys, anybody else have anything else to say about um, uh, Rosado or uh, Quillen? No? Okay, well, (laughs) then, you guys are all good? Okay. I'm still waiting for a Triple G. I know they have a lot. They have uh, Mike Perez is over there, too. There are a lot of sparring. Mike's on the undercard. I believe he's 19 or 20 and 0. Um, wanted to get him on the show, but we need to get an interpreter. He just speaks Spanish, so hopefully that will happen soon. Um, let's see. Do we want to take a commercial? No, we won't take a commercial yet. We will move on and talk about Bernard Hopkins and uh, Cairo Moret from Germany. Should be interesting. I was listening to some interviews of him. Uh, Carlo Moret has won 25, 15 KOs. He's only lost once in a one draw. Um, this is a light heavyweight match. And Bernard Hopkins has been fighting since Carlo was like a little boy. Uh, he has won 53, 32 KOs, lost six, and two draws. Who do you have, Prophet? 
I, I think this is a showcase for Bernard Hopkins. You know, uh, from, from all uh, intent and purposes, I think this is Murat's first fight in, in the U.S. The only fighters I even recognize on his resume are uh, Gabriel Campillo, who, who he fought the draw against. Uh, and then I, I believe he, he uh, also lost to him. Uh, oh, actually, he beat him uh, in a very razor-thin decision. And then he fought him again. I believe it was a draw. And his only loss was to Nathan Cleverly, who we all saw get exposed by that by that Russian beast, uh, Sergei Kovalev, this year. Um, you know, the key to be to beating Bernard Hopkins is to just uh, basically it's like a repeat of Rosado Quillen. He's got to be very active, and he's just got to throw a lot of punches. Jermaine Taylor and Joe Calzaghe basically threw a lot of punches uh, to beat Hopkins. Punches and combinations. They kept on throwing punches. Didn't care where they landed. They just threw a lot of punches. And if you can't do that, then you've got to impose your will on Bernard, like Chair Dawson did. Chair Dawson didn't land a lot of punches like Taylor and Calzaghe, but Chair Dawson imposed his will on Bernard Hopkins, and that's how you know, he beats you. Bernard Hopkins, I take a lot of flack for this, is one of my ten favorite fighters of all time. He's a Jedi master. He's old school. He prides himself on his defense. He's not the most aesthetically crowd-pleasing fighter, but, you know, he broke George Foreman's record for the oldest man to ever win any legitimate title, and he just inspires me. You know, he, he destroys fighters like Kelly Pavlik and Antonio Tarver, you know, uh, after the you know, age of 40, and he's just he's great. You know, he, he finally got the recognition he deserved when he beat Trinidad and De La Hoya for years. He was fighting on obscure undercards, and here's a, a, a real success story of a guy who really – got his just do later on in life and he's just a you know a great guy to root for i know some people have issues with bernard hopkins when he took the puerto rican flag uh, uh and, and threw it down uh, before the trinidad fight but i think that was just to get into trinidad's head so to speak and, and i love hopkins and uh, like i said the only way uh, Murat's gonna beat him is if he consistently throws punches i don't care if they land on Hopkins' shoulder or elbows. You just got to keep on throwing. Don't let Hopkins' dirty tactics, and he will bring a, a lot of dirty tactics into this fight. He'll use his head, he'll use his elbows, he'll clinch typical Bernard Hopkins like performance. And I think it'll be like his last fight against Tavoris Cloud. Hopkins will jab Marat, hold him. Jab Marat, hold him. And, you know, most boxing fans will say Hopkins is boring, he should just retire. Uh, I, I, I need to take a sleeping pill. To, I'd rather take a sleeping pill than watch this fight. You know, it, it's not easy to stomach Bernard Hopkins. But listen, at the advanced age of 48 years of, uh, old, I don't mind him. He's, he's great. And barring something unforeseen, like maybe Marat lands a, a haymaker of a punch that Hopkins doesn't see coming, or maybe Hopkins, you know, didn't train hard enough, which I, I don't think is going to happen because he's. He's a gym rat now, doesn't drink, doesn't smoke. I think Hopkins will school Marat. You know, in a perfect world, if Hopkins wants to make a statement, he should stop Marat. You know, uh, I, I think, you know, uh, you know, enough going the distance with him, maybe he, he could school Marat enough where his cornerman will throw in the towel or Hopkins will stop him in the 10th round. But I see Hopkins putting on a clinic. Uh, going so far as to say he'll win 10 out of the 12 rounds. I think Marat's lucky if he wins three rounds. So overall, it's typical B-Hop, not the most aesthetically crowd-pleasing performance, but the legend that is B-Hop rolls on. Uh, and he'll win a very, very easy, albeit boring decision. I can't believe the executioner defaced my Puerto Rican flag like that with my Tito Trinidad. That makes me sad. I didn't even <laughs> know that. You just disappointed me. Wow. All right. I still like Bernard Hopkins, but that's just not okay. Not okay. Don't do that again, Bernard Hopkins. All right. <laughs> what do you think, Vivek? Uh, yeah, I think it's a, a fairly easy night for, for Hopkins. You know, I was listening to Prophet there, and, and I totally would agree. The, the thing that I love the most about Hopkins is that he has done far more with so little you know, compared to any fighter I could think of. I won't say in the history of the sport, but you have to say almost. I mean, he's not fast. You know, he's not powerful. He's not a lot of things. 
but he knows how to win, you know, and, and it's all mental, you know, and, and it always goes back to the mental element in the fight game, but he's just a very, very cerebral fighter, and, and you have to love what he's been able to accomplish uh, throughout the history of his career, but uh, I think it's a fairly easy fight for him. Uh, I don't I don't give Marat more than two rounds. Some people might think that's a little strong, but I just think Hopkins will, will come out to put on a solid performance. Uh, I'm hearing a lot of a lot of waves about this uh, scenario with him going to 60, uh, 160 for Mayweather, which I don't see happening in a million years. But uh, I did find it very interesting that that he said he was contacted. You know, not he contacted anyone. Uh, he he was contacted by Showtime and by by Golden Boy uh, reps and, and basically asked, can he make 160 by summer of 2014? Uh, I don't know what to make of that because knowing Hopkins the way that I do, he's he's not a guy to blow smoke. You know, he he's a straight shooter. Whatever it is, you're either gonna like it or love it or hate it, but he he shoots straight. You know, he typically comes correct. So, uh, for him to say that publicly, uh, knowing that it'll get back to those sources and no one has come out and denied it yet, uh, I think that's very telling. Very very telling. So. I would hope we don't have that fight. I'm not so sure I want to see it. But uh, I think he's going to come out to put up a, a solid performance, and it'll be inter- very interesting to see where he goes from there. All right. Steven, you're up. I, shoot, you guys are on point. I, I can't disagree at all. I, I Let me just say this. Um, you know, Bernard Hopkins is 6'1". Murat's what, 5'9", 5'10"? Um Hopkins has got 32 KOs. Uh, Murat has, what, 26 fights, period. Um, Bernard's got too much class, movement, speed. I expect him to use uh, all of his little tricks that he has. He's going to move in and out, uh, picking up points while he moves, stealing rounds, um, conserve his energy. Um, He's not going to get caught flat-footed and play into Murat's hands by, you know, giving him a chance to do anything. I expect him to uh, just have another KG easy win for uh, um, unanimous decision. I don't, you know, Bernard's not really looking for anything other than he's publicly let it be known that he deserves a big money fight. I I think that, you know, he, he should have been gone. He should go over and fight maybe Carl Frock in London, pick on Kovalev or Adonis Stevenson. But once again, Bernard said it, and, and he's probably right. You know, um, his body of work over his career, over his 48 years, he should be allowed to, to pick and choose who he wants to fight. And so he's going to be, do that very carefully. And um, I just think this Saturday night, I, I mean, that, that fight that comes up um, with he and, and Murad, I don't think it's going to be very entertaining at all. It's basically just going to be a uh, glorified sparring session for him. So Hopkins, human, unanimous decision, not, not very interesting at all. Well, you're right, Stephen. Uh, Bernard is 6'1 with a 75-inch reach. Then you have the 5'10.5 Carl with a 70-inch reach. So hopefully Bernard will just get out there and use his jab. I mean, that's really what he has to do, stick and move. But you know that's not gonna, how it's going to play out. It should be, should be interesting. I'm just glad I'm not going to have to pay for it. No offense, Mr. Executioner, yeah. but... <laughs> no offense. All right, you guys, I'm going to go to a commercial. I'm going to run the Big Bear. I'm going to grab Gennady out of that ring and bring him back. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a minute and three, 32 seconds with Real Combat Media Boxing Radio, guys. We'll be right back. This is Real Combat Media Radio. Check us out at realcombatmedia.com. While you're there, check out the... Check out the Feed the Poor link on the bottom of every article, and you can send a donation if you're interested. That is, once again, on the bottom of every article as well as on the top of the website. If you are an MMA, boxing, or fitness business and interested in sponsoring our website or radio podcast, send us an email. Advertising at realcombatmedia.com. Once again, that is advertising at realcombatmedia.com. Make sure to check out the Real Combat Media MMA and Boxing Store at the top of the menu at realcombatmedia.com. We carry a collection of products. We have the Cardio Mask, which is excellent for all fighters, endurance athletes, and serious fitness enthusiasts. Once you are in the Real Combat Media Store, click on the banner on that page. We also carry Alpha Brain. Alpha Brain is a great and natural product which activates your brain's neurotransmitters and helps you think more clearly, which improves brain function. 
You can also purchase the world's healthiest plant protein, which comes from hemp. There are many other products online on the online store, and click on the on it banner at the Real Combat Media Store, and you can purchase Alpha Brain and other health products. Use the discount code Real Combat Media, and you will receive 10% off at the checkout store on the on it. That is O N N I T on the banner at Real Combat Media Store. Buckle up. Here we go. Let's get this show started. Welcome back to Real Combat Media Boxing Radio, episode 32. I'm still your host, Christy Rosario, here in Los Angeles with the boxing prophet, Vivek Wallace and Steven Johnson. We have a full crowd today. We're doing awesome and having a great time. Live callers, 347-324-5998. You can Twitter us at Real Combat Media or find us on Facebook at Real Combat Media in the search bar. Now, I told you all that I was going to run to Big Bear. I was going to grab Gennady out of the ring and bring him here. So here we have the WBA IBO middleweight champion, Gennady Triple G Golovkin. How are you, Gennady? I'm okay. Thank you so much. I'm okay. I'm great. <laughs> did, I, did, I just, did I just take you out of the ring? Were you sparring or were you just working out? You've been working hard? Yes, every day my work is hard. You know, sparring hard, my training hard every day, every time. Oh. I know. We are looking forward to this fight with Curtis Stevens. Oh, oh. I'm not sure. Christy. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, right now, yes. Okay, so how do you feel about fighting Curtis Stevens? I feel it's great, you know. I think it's very good fight for us, you know. Not just for us, for everybody, for show, for TV, for people, you know, for fans. I think it's very fun because he's a strong guy. You know, just I'm hungry too. I think it's a great fight. Have you been training any different for Curtis Stevens and for the other fights? Yes, a little bit, yes. I have a uh, special for, uh, I have three sparring partners. Like, like short life experience, you know, mm, just more power, more strategy. Just right now I'm ready. Right no, right now I feel perfect. So you're gonna give more power to Curtis Stevens than you did with Matthew Macklin, or any of the other guys that you just like disabled. You're gonna hit yeah, them harder. No, a little different, you know. A little bit different style this uh, this time. It's kind of like for conditional, but for decision, you know. I want maybe this fight like decision, you not know, just I'm ready with decision all round, uh, all round. So you feel like this maybe is going to be your hardest fight that you've had so I far? Think, yes, I think so. Yeah, I think this fight is the hardest. You think so? Yeah, I remember yes. Curtis Stevens as an amateur, and he was, like you said, Curtis Stevens is a very strong fighter, so you are correct, but we know your power. We know you. Yes, um, yes I, you know, I, know he, I know him, yeah, he's a very strong guy. That's right, and I was talking to your coach, Abel Sanchez, and I was asking him, about, you know, now Cotto wants, well, Sergio Martinez wants to fight Miguel Cotto. And, um, you know, Abel said, you know, he doesn't blame Sergio Martinez. You know, it's, he wants the big payday and he's going to probably do it and then not fight you. How do you feel about that, that you may never be able to fight uh-huh. Sergio Martinez? Uh, oh, yeah. You know, yeah, my, my focus right now wants to see, you know, my focus was just a very important part for me in the future. Yes, of course. No. Miguel or Sergio, perfect opening for me. No, I respect, I respect, I respect, yeah, Sergio, I respect Sergio. You know, just great fighter. You know, just very good fighter. They are very good. I want to ask um, the boxing prophet. What would you like to ask Triple G? Excuse me. Prophet. Okay, Prophet, let me see. Hold on. Oh, are you there, Prophet? Yes. 
Okay, we didn't hear you. Sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Janata, can you hear me? Yes. I hear it. Yes, you come into this fight having knocked out 14 straight opponents, and American boxing fans aren't used to seeing that. I go way back to the days of, uh, of Mike Tyson, and I read somewhere you grew up being a huge Mike Tyson fan. Do you sort of bring Mike Tyson's style into the ring in that you don't get paid for overtime and you look to knock out all your opponents as soon as possible? Yes, I think so. I think so, yeah. Thank you very much. You know, Mike is very good. I respect him, you know, just... I not like Mike Tyson, you know, just... Oh, but Mike is too much for me, you know. Yeah, I have my power, I have my speed, I have my timing, you know, just... This is my style. And um, Christy alluded to the fact that Sergio Martinez is, is going to look to fight Miguel Cotto. Uh, and your trainer, Abel Sanchez, was on the show several months ago, and he said that you might be the best fighter he's ever trained, period. Even better than the Hall of Famer, Terry Norris. If the Sergio Martinez fight never happens, would you be willing uh, and able to jump up to super middleweight? Because we all know Andre Ward is looking for a big pay-per-view mega fight. Would you ever fight Andre Ward at super middleweight? Yes, of course, yes. I hope. I hope in the future. You no, know, right now my focus is 160. In the future, yes, maybe next year, I think 168, you know, or 154. I can't because today after training, I'm 152. You no, know, for me, it's not a problem going to 154 or 158. All okay, right. Yes, I know well, what? What, Carter? So I was going to say, I know there are a lot of people that want to ask Triple G some questions, so I'm, 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 I'm done. Definitely. I'm okay, Vivek, what would you like to ask Triple G? Hey, hey Triple G, first I, I want to say thank you uh, once again for joining us. My question, uh, and I'm actually taking this question from a fight fan who knew that we would have you on today, so this is coming direct, to, direct from social media world. Uh, this particular fight fan, Jerry from Arkansas, wants to know, uh, how do you feel about the possibility of a potential showdown uh, at some point, possibly next year, uh, with someone like Saul Canelo Alvarez? What, what are your thoughts about the possibility of that fight uh, in the event that both of you win your, your pending fights? Oh, you know, just, I feel it's okay. I think it's okay as far as for me, you know, it's, and every fight, right now, every fight is very important, very dangerous, very dangerous, you know, just because this is top fight, this is uh, like first class, you know, this fight is first class, very dangerous fight. Okay, okay, and uh, one one last question I wanted to ask you for myself, you know, I didn't know until Prophet mentioned earlier that uh, you're a very big Mike Tyson fan, but when we look at you, we see a contrast of, of many different styles. You're aggressive, you're a power puncher, but you're also a very uh, cerebral thinker, and, and you think a lot. You're an intelligent fighter. Uh, I would like to know who are some of the other fighters uh, in the sport that you looked up to uh, that helped shape your style as, as we see it when you enter the ring now. Oh, I don't know. It's a good question. Oh. oh, this is box. This is box. You know, every time it's a new star. Every, every couple of years, just new star. Look, and Floyd, right now. Yes. Uh, Main, yes. Canelo, yes. So fast. You know, in the future, maybe me, you know, just. Oh. It's a good question. Oh, this is box. Well, well, Gennady, what about uh, Ruslan Provodnikov? How do you like him? Oh, he's a good fighter, yeah. I like him. I like him. Two fights. Wow. Great fight. Very good. Fight. Yeah? Very yeah. good. Very good. Very yeah. strong as well. Yes. Last but, fight is good. I think last fight is good for Ruslan Provodnikov. It's not for... Rivalado, no, he's too much weight. Too much. Oh, he he can't. Rivalado, he can't box him because too much weight. I think you know. It's, that you know, it's not box. You thought it was too heavy. Is that what you're saying? Yes, he's too heavy for 140. 
You know, lost five. I, Different five. I'm the five. I see. Rebecca, you have any other questions, or should we move on to Stephen? No, 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 no. That that was it. I'll I'll let Steve jump in from there. Thank you again, G G G. I appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Very thanks. All right, Stephen. What do you have to ask? All right, Triple G. Uh, thanks for coming on and speaking to us. I I was privy to earlier this afternoon the press conference, all the teleconference conference where. Uh, Curtis Stevens is still still pretty disrespectful. I know that uh, earlier, a couple of months ago, he pulled a casket deal that upset you a little bit, and you said you didn't even want to do anything other than have a street fight. Do you still feel that way? Uh, his disrespectfulness, has it inspired you to you really want to go in and take him apart? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, why not? Yes. I'll come with you. So he's just been very, very rude to you, Gennady, Curtis Stevens? I think so, yes. Yes, why not? Yes. And now does that upset you? Does that make you want to fight harder or work harder, or is it just no big deal? This is, this is yes, this is, this is a deal. Second, this is far. You what? Uh, this shows this is deal. Yeah, this is shows this is in this show. Second, yeah. it's a sport. It's a sport. It's a sport. I got you. I got you. Yeah. I got you. That's the only so, question I had, Christy. Okay. Well, it sounds like your English is getting better. Have you been taking, did the tutor come up and start working with you, Gennady? Uh, uh, you no, just lessons? practice. No, just practice. It's, it's the gym. No, just everyday practice. Just. Excuse me, my English not well, no. Maybe say well, myself, you know, just every day just say myself like baby face. You know. oh. oh. Well, it sounds like it's gotten better, and we really appreciate you coming on today and wish you the best of luck, Minati. Thank you so much. Well, you well hopefully after, after the fight, when you win, you can come back and we can talk some more. Okay? Thank you sure. so much. All right, Gennady, have a wonderful day, and we'll be watching you on November 2nd, okay? Did I, did I lose you, Gennady? Are you there? Yeah, All right, you. good luck. Okay, good Thank luck. We'll, we'll watch you on your site. Take care. Oh, okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, we're going to go to commercial. Bye. And come right back in a minute and 32 seconds. This is Real Combat Media Radio. Check us out at realcombatmedia.com. While you're there, check out the check out the feed the poor link on the bottom of every article, and you can send a donation if you're interested. That is once again on the bottom of every article, as well as on the top of the website. If you are an MMA, boxing, or fitness business, and interested in sponsoring our website or radio podcast, send us an email. Advertising at realcombatmedia.com. Once again, that is advertising at realcombatmedia.com. Make sure to check out the Real Combat Media MMA and Boxing Store at the top of the menu at realcombatmedia.com. We carry a collection of products. We have the Cardio Mask, which is excellent for all fighters, endurance athletes, and serious fitness enthusiasts. Once you are in the Real Combat Media Store, click on the banner on that page. We also carry Alpha Brain. Alpha Brain is a great and natural product which activates your brain's neurotransmitters and helps you think more clearly, which improves brain function. You can also purchase the world's healthiest plant protein, which comes from hemp. There are many other products online on the online store, and click on the On It banner at the Real Combat Media Store, and you can purchase Alpha Brain and other health products. Use the discount code Real Combat Media, and you will receive 10% off at the checkout store on the On It. That is O N N I T on the banner at Real Combat Media Store. Buckle up, here we go. Let's get this show started. Welcome back to the last 15 minutes of Real Combat Media Boxing Radio, episode 32. I'm your host, Christy Rosario, here with my boxing prophet, my boxing prophet, like he's mine, sorry, uh, Vivek Wallace and Steven Johnson. My Steven Johnson and my Vivek Wallace, so I got them all. Uh, you can call us at 347-324-5998. You can Twitter us at Real Combat Media. 
at Boxing Girl, that's me, B X I N G I R L, or at Boxing Profit 68. Uh, find us on Facebook at Real Combat Media in the search bar. And we are back. We just talked to Triple G, Gennady Golovkin, who is fighting Curtis Stevens on November 2nd in New York, Madison Square Garden. I sure wish I had booked that ticket. That would be cool. Well, what did you think, Prophet? I know you've always really liked Triple G. What did you think of our conversation? First, let me tell you that for a second, you boosted my self-esteem. I was your boxing prophet. And then you had to mention <laughs> Rebecca and Stephen, and you sort of brought me down a couple of notches. So well, you've got a fear, prophet, no doubt about it. <laughs> but um, I oh, think you know, exa- exactly what I said about Bernard Hopkins is the total antithesis of Triple G. He's a revelation. He's all that's well and great with the world of boxing. And don't be fooled by this chaos streak of 14 straight opponents. The man can box. The man can hit you with body shots. I was at the fight at the theater against Rosado Live, and I had nosebleed seats, basically like two seats away from the roof. And you could actually hear his punches all the way from the nosebleed seats. They were thudding. They were barbaric. They were brutal. There were lots of oohs and ahs in the crowd. And, you know, I was born and raised in Brooklyn for the first 10 years of my life, so I wish nothing but the best for Curtis Stevens, and it's no big secret that most boxing fans think that Johnny Gonzalez's stunning first-round knockout of Abner Morris was the upset of the year. I- I- I'll do one better. If Curtis Stevens could knock out Triple G, I would call it maybe the biggest upset of the past 10 years in boxing. Uh, I- I'll make my pick when we have that show, but I would be shocked if n- not only I- I- well, would I be shocked if Curtis Stevens beats Triple G, I would be shocked if Triple G did knock out Curtis Stevens inside of three rounds. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's just uh, be careful what you wish for, Mr. Curtis Stevens. You're, you're from Brooklyn, and I respect you. But I think come no- November, I believe the fight's November 2nd, uh, your mouth got the best of you. I think Curtis Stevens is in for a, a brutal, brutal downfall. Well, wow, I okay. Stuff, but I wish you would have had a chance this afternoon to uh, be privy to the the teleconference I was, Curtis Stevens, not only did he say he's going to knock out Triple G, but he says he's going to knock him off and drop him off in Bensonhurst. So he's been wow. very disrespectful. Yeah, he's been Chris very disrespectful. <laughs> oh, man, he's been very disrespectful. And I I, I think that, uh, uh, like I said, what, what was it, about a month ago, he did the casket thing. We had all his buddies around a casket that said R.I.P. Uh, Golovkin. Um I, I just think that Curtis Stevens has set himself up, Prophet, exactly like you said. He's uh, uh, His mouth is wrote to check his ass, can't cash. And I think on those in, November 2nd, I would be in. I'm, I'll give him a couple more rounds. I'd say within five rounds because, you know, Curtis is very good. He's only but, but about five, six, five, seven, something like that. He's very good at staying low. And so Golovkin might have a little bit of trouble, you know, um, just trying to throw that punch from, you know, way down, uh, a little lower than he's used to. But I think eventually he gets to him and, and knocks him out. All right. What about you, Vivek? I like Triple G in that fight. Um, I'm not so sure, Curtis. I mean, even though he is a powerful puncher, I think Golovkin definitely has the ability to take punches. But he's just a better – I think he's just a more technical fighter. Uh, I think he'll he will have a much easier time imposing his will in the methodical style that that he does. You know, the funny thing with with GGG, he's not a fast fighter on any level, but he's the most precise slow puncher I've ever seen. Like he, when he aims at a target, he doesn't miss much, and, and he's he's just very very good at executing his style of, of boxing. And I think that it will be, you know, like I said a moment ago, I think it will be easier for him to impose his will on, on Curtis as opposed to the opposite. I just don't think that Kurt will be able to, to keep him off of him. And when he starts taking shots, you know, like Prophet said, I wouldn't be surprised to see an early stoppage, you know. I, I really wouldn't actually. Wow, an early stoppage. I haven't heard any of this about Curtis Stevens. I'm going to now go and Google it when we get off here. I guess I haven't been paying attention. Um, you know, Gennady has won 27. 24 of those are KOs, and he hasn't lost. 
Uh, Curtis Stevens has 25 wins, 18 KOs, and he has lost three and been KO'd once, just so we know our records here. But I do remember him, like I said, as an amateur, and Curtis Stevens is being very, very strong and very good, um, but I haven't really heard much about him after that. I don't know. We, we shall see. I do as well say that Triple G is going to stop Curtis Stevens. I don't know what round. I'm not the prophet. I have no idea, but I do think that he will stop him. Um, I want to ask, so Vivek, you're on to the left hip lounge after this? Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you, Chris. Can you say that again? Uh, you're going to the left hook round after this, so we make sure we tell everybody. Yes, definitely. Uh, for those who who haven't heard, then you know definitely follow me. Uh, after this show, I'll be jumping on left hook lounge, which is, is the show that I run Tuesday night. Uh, fortunately, it's concurrent with this, so I get a chance to hang out with you guys. But I always like to let people know it's it's a change of pace, so you you treat it to two different styles. You know, here we like to get word directly from the sources, talk to the fighters. Uh, on my show for, for two hours straight, we, we let the fighters do the fighting, and we hear directly from the fans. So it's old-school vintage sports talk format uh, radio, and, and uh, we like for the, the, the typical fight Joes out there, Joes and James, I should say, uh, to get their Thank thoughts you. in and, 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 and their position on the fight. So. Uh, I am going to have to run on that note, but I, I definitely want to thank you guys for having me again. Absolutely. Well, thank you. It's always good having you. And if you want to find the Left Hook Lounge, you can go to Real Combat Media, and if you look under right next to Vivek's name in the promo, it has a link right to the Left Hook Lounge, and you can go, all you Joes and Janes, and you can go and argue and agree with uh, Vivek. Vivek, it's always a pleasure having you on here, and make sure you come back very, very soon, Okay. Absolutely. Uh, Prophet, Steve, you guys take care, man. Good, good hanging out with everybody. Take nice care. Thank you, uh, uh, Vivek. I uh, look forward to it again. Absolutely. Thank hey. you. Good night, Ryder Beck. Steven, so All right, tell us a little out, bit. Guys. All right, take care. Vivek, oh, not Vivek. See, now I got all confused. Uh, Steven, hey. <laughs> so while you're on here, do you have any Twitter or Facebook or any links you want to shout out? Oh, yeah, I'm Twitter. It's uh, at Inside Boxing. Um, Facebook, you can find me at uh, Stephen Johnson, Facebook with a PH. Um, one thing I wanted to mention before we left today is uh, I got the news earlier today that Super Bantamweight Frankie Leal had passed away. He had fought, uh, fought this weekend in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. Oh. KO by Ra- Raul Gerales. Saturday night, they transferred him to a hospital there and those Cabos, and he ended up in San Diego, um, but he passed away. Uh, only 26 years old, Christy, so um, we just want to oh, extend wow. our condolences to his Say his name again. Oh, Frankie Leo. That's Ali who passed Leo. away? You remember, you remember Frankie Leo, the, the super band Oh, my goodness. And he's the one that just passed away? Yeah, he just passed away. Oh, my gosh, that's so sad. Yeah, my condolences, our condolences to the family and friends. Wow, that is, that's tragic when you hear that happening. Oh, well, thank you for it. I wanted to thank, um, uh, I wanted to thank uh, Mike Alvarado and, and, and Top Rank both. They both dedicated a uh, um, dollar for each ticket sold at Saturday Night's Fight to uh, the Salvation Army to help with a uh, um, relief of, for the flood victims here in Colorado, and that turned out to be some seven thousand dollars. And and just wanted to thank them for that. It's definitely a, a great thing to help out people here in Colorado, uh, Colorado that were flood victims. That is so nice. I'm yeah, I, that's wonderful. I would wish more promoters would do that. Now you, they can pick a cause each time and give a dollar, which is you know per ticket is not going to hurt them at all. I think that is exactly, fantastic. Exactly. And, and um, Christy, it's always good to speak with you, uh, Prophet. Um, we're friends on well, Facebook, so we just right, right. give each other a hard time whenever we <laughs> want to. And I do the same with Christy. And thank you guys for having me. I it's appreciate it. And I look forward to be on the show oh. again. Yeah, don't leave, though. You know, we have five minutes, so we're not letting you leave yet. I just wanted to make sure that we had time that we could tell a little bit about you. And then you're at InsideBoxing.com as well. The yes, Denver yes, Boxing website is www.insideboxing.com, and um, 
And I also have a, a column that I do, uh, examiner.com. Um, you look under Fight Sports under Examiner, and you can go to Denver, and you can find me there. Excellent, excellent. It's always fun having you on the show. And, Pasha, what about you? I know you have a few things you want to say before we go. We have about five minutes left. But don't take Just five minutes. You can talk for a minute. <laughs> go ahead. Well, sure. Picking up on, on notes that, that we've discussed, you know, uh, Triple G, to me, I know for shock value, maybe Stevenson um, against um, Dawson uh, is everyone's knockout of the year. But to me, you could put either one of Triple G's violent knockouts, whether it was the Ashida knockout or the Matthew Macklin body shot knockout, is my knockout of the year. Curtis Stevens, for what it's worth, three of his last four fights, he has scored first-round knockouts albeit against nondescript opponents. So if anything, we'll learn if Triple G can take a punch because Stevens will hit him, you know, the few rounds that he's in there. And Vivek brought up a great point, and we could actually spend a whole, uh, a whole two hours on this if the fight ever materializes. You know, with Hopkins Mayweather, it's not crazy. Floyd's running out of opponents. He's not going to fight Pacquiao anytime soon, even if Pacquiao destroys Rios. He'll never fight a guy like, say, Andre Ward. I don't know if Sergio Martinez will ever go there. And um, based on what I heard at the end of November, Adonis Stevenson and Sergey Kovalev are fighting separate opponents on HBO, so they're going to have a, a mega showdown uh, at light heavyweight. So I don't think the winner of that's going to face Bernard Hopkins. So if Bernard Hopkins could get down to 160, just imagine the press conferences. Imagine the 24-7 that will take place with me or the Access 360 on Showtime. Imagine all the bantering back and forth between Floyd and Bernard Hopkins. I, I think it would be great. I think it, it's sort of a, a, a dream fight for me. I think it's, it, it's, it's a fight that's worth at least discussing for, from both sides. I would love to see that fight. Assuming sorry, that Paul, sorry, Prophet. I, I have no interest in seeing that. <laughs> Like I said, Bernard has let it be known that he thinks he deserves a, a big payday. So for him to come down to 160 pounds, first of all, he'd look like an emaciated skeleton. I have no need in seeing that. Um, it would be all about payday. And, yeah, there would be a lot of banter back and forth between him. But once the fight started, Floyd would pick him apart. That wouldn't be interesting to me. But, you know, like I said, uh, uh, Bernard thinks he deserves a payday, and he's not going to take on anybody that's going to be too tough. So, why not come down to 160 pounds and look like a skeleton and go ahead and get paid if that's his plan? But I think there's uh, there's other alternatives that eventually either Bernard's going to have to retire or he's going to be forced to fight one of these top guys. And, and like I said, that's going to have to be Kovalov uh, or Stevenson or even even Frock over in London. I don't think he'll take that chance. I think he'll rather go ahead and retire and just do more promotions for Golden Boy. Well, I think that 24-7 would be great to watch, you know, between Floyd and Bernard Hopkins. That would be very entertaining. I'm not sure I'd really want to see the fight. I mean, Prophet, do you really think that Hopkins would have a chance with Mayweather? Yeah, but the way he fights, he lulls you into a full sense of security, and then he just grabs on and he holds and he clinches, and of course, you know, Mayweather would pot shot him to death, but wouldn't he be able to get off. Bernard Hopkins is, is a master at neutralizing people's game plans, and, you know, Floyd's brilliant also. I think the fight itself would probably stink, but the lead up to the fight would be, would be great. I think Hopkins would get in his face, and, you know, um, Steve, Stephen makes a good point. You know, maybe the, the Carl Frock fight in England is a good alternative, but for, for all intents and purposes, like I said, Stevenson and Kovalev are on a collision course, and the winner of that fight doesn't generate enough money for Hopkins. You know, Hopkins is rainbow is, is with Floyd. And like I said, the, you know, Floyd, I don't think, you, even if Pacquiao destroys Rios, they're not going to revisit those talks for whatever reason. And the only other really, really big fight for Floyd is either Sergio Martinez and or Andre Ward. And I don't think he wants to risk getting an O on his record to face either one of those guys. So from Flo for, in Floyd's twisted mind, you know, he wants to retire undefeated. And I think Bernard Hopkins is, is a lot less of a risk than either a Sergio Martinez or an Andre Ward. But, you know, Bernard Hopkins is a legend for a reason. Uh, even if I, I, I'll assume and I will pick Mayweather to win that fight, but I don't think Bernard okay. Hopkins would embarrass himself. 
You guys, we have like 30 seconds, so I'm going to say goodbye. We can continue this next Tuesday. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Prophet. Have a wonderful day. I will Thank talk you to you guys too. later. Bye, guys. Okay, take care. This has been Bye, Take Care. been another great show. I really enjoyed speaking to Rudy Hernandez and Gennady Golovkin. Thank you, Abel Sanchez, for letting us speak to Triple G. We will be back next Tuesday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, with Episode 33. Special thanks also to Sue Fox, WBAN.org, Vivek Wallace, Stephen Johnson, and my co-host, The Prophet. Thank you. Have a great week. Bye-bye.